Welcome to the Wildflower Learning Podcast, where we talk about everything education with leading experts in mental health fields, educational fields, parents, and kids themselves. We hope you enjoy. Okay, this is our third podcast. This is going to be a shorter one. We have an expo night coming up March 10th. Um, and the expo night is when the kids showcase what they've been doing for their journey project, which the journey project, there's three of them throughout the year. We have different topics that the kids will explore and create. And those topics included this year, who am I rock and change? So this expo we're about to go into is rock. Ellen's with me again. Hello. And so what we want to do is just go through the purpose of the journey um, why we don't use grades when giving feedback to the kids or any sort of a award or certificate. And um, as an audience member, if you, you are coming to our expo night now or in the future, uh, what to look for? Because it's, again, the goals are different with what we're doing here than your typical um, kind of science fair or performance. All right. Well, Ellen, you want to get a, give a whack at uh, the <laughs> purpose? Sure. Um, I think in a school like ours where the intangible learning is happening all the time, it's hard to always uh, get a grasp on what maybe happens during the day. I think journeys become this really beautiful process of being able to show how the kids work in a space like ours. So we see them playing and exploring all the time. And then they're doing this expression where they take the learning that they have gained through that play and through that exploration through those self-directed choices that they make all the time. And they begin to kind of build upon that understanding or that new information, that new experience. Um, And then journey becomes this process of, okay, how do I take all of that learning and how do I show that to someone else? And we watch it in the classroom all the time. We were just talking about that this morning. Every time you try to pin them down, they're, you know, four steps, five steps ahead of you and they're already building something else or working on some other experiment or some other creative process. So just holding them still for a moment and trying to shine a lens on the learning and the just the beautiful dynamics that happen within um, a couple of months in our space, which is, it's really just an opportunity kind of to take a snapshot and have kids go through that process, a full work cycle, knowing that it's good to explore, it's good to play, it's good to ask questions, it's good to be curious, it's good to just wonder about things. And then that leads them somewhere to some new information And then again, just how do we take that information and make it accessible to someone else? How do we just go around and share what we're learning um, and be able to give that learning away to someone else? Yeah, I like that description. It's a couple things you said in there that I I like specifically is the the process of learning something and then creating and then sharing it with others. I think that's really the focus that we're looking at. It's not like so much the end product. That's yeah. it's neat when they make it, right? A really cool project, but that's not even the point yeah. of it. It's it's actually the process itself and the enjoyment, hopefully, right? Yeah. If a kid has found a project <laughs> that matches with them mm-hmm. um, really well, it, it's fantastic to to see how excited they are to present those things. And and we have challenges, right? It's It touches on some of the kind of traditional methods of schooling and, mm. and um, you know, some of the research out there that shows like the moment you start grading it or assessing it, creativity and the quality of work goes down. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we see some of that in the space. And so a, a big part of that for us as facilitators, I think, is constantly asking questions yeah. about you know, what they want to do based off of what we've seen them getting into Mm -hmm. and what you spoke to, like they're always creating stuff and building stuff. There's so many times we both have seen them do something amazing that (laughs) ties to the topic. Yeah. And then we're like, this is it. This is your project. And they're like, nah, Yep. (laughs) no, this is for me. (laughs) I'm done with this. Actually moving on. (laughs) I don't know. What do you, what's, what's with that? (laughs) It, it's, I say it all the time in here, it just, it's so intangible. I think, I think part of the, the, the need to create this end product and have something to grade and then something to mm-hmm. you know, garner data from is because we're just so worried that it's mm-hmm. not really happening. Um, and I think it's why a standard-based system does that pressured grading like it does because what if? 
What if they're not getting it? What if they're not keeping up? What if all the, you know, it's all of the questions that as adults we, I think, get hung up on. So you put all this pressure into that, into that space and it just, they just don't want to anymore. They, you know, we recoil from that kind of judgment and that kind of evaluation when, when it's been un, uh, you know, unsolicited. I don't need your <laughs> feedback about me actually. Thank you very much. So I think, I think we want to see this thing because we want to hold it and we want to know that it's solid and that it's trustworthy and that it's doing the things in our kids that it's supposed to do. I just don't think that's good. I think in the end that's more damaging. It's really, it's saying something about us because the child is so busy creating and so busy exploring and so on to the next thing because they're just following passion after passion. You know, and somebody creates a game and you just get you just get pulled in by a relationship or mm-hmm. or community and you know you're invested in somebody you you just want to follow the next thing mm-hmm. that's fascinating you and it's so that's right where their brain development is mm-hmm. it's exactly what they should be doing i think it's grown ups who get in the way yeah. of all of that and we just want a concrete thing to say mm-hmm. oh you're doing good i can tell because you got this grade on this project and i can see it so i now can evaluate but again we got to come back to that it's in their biology, and we're not meant to judge mm-hmm. all of their mm-hmm. all of their being. Right. You just have to trust that that person is going to be the person that they need, and they'll find the information that they need to do the things that they want to do with themselves in life. Um, so yeah, I think I think a lot of it is the pressure. We want proof, and then we evaluate them because they're small, and we feel like we have the right to do so. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well said, and that's. It shows you like the balancing act we're doing oh, with these journeys, right? Yep. To not fall into that, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to get a grade and a certificate for for this. Mm-hmm. Um, because like you said, it undermines the motivation to do these type of things. Um, and then even the identity piece where yeah. they're seeing their value based off of this, you know, external product and they're getting attention for that, this positive attention rather than... That's so true the celebration of learning something and I created something and I want to share this with you yes. um, and connecting through that, through that it's subtle um, in so certain true. ways, but it's also a very different thing. Yeah. Um, so that's why, I mean, we've already answered the question of why we don't grade these things. Um, yeah. Do you want to expand on that at all? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it comes back to what is a grade? What is the purpose of a grade? And again, I think it's this external stamp of validation the kids certainly don't need it to know where they are. We, we know, what is it, the Goldilocks, whatever Zone. that. Zone, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. They know when it's too hard. They know when it's too easy. Yeah. And they find their sweet spot all the time. Mm-hmm. But again, we come back to this. We're external, so now we will evaluate your product. And the undermining part that you were just speaking to is it becomes part of their identity where we might not intend for that to be, but we know that that's what the research says. We know that that's what kids say. They come in with the mantra in their head that I am not good at X, Y, and Z, rather than math is hard, or writing was a challenge for me, or my fine motor skills haven't quite developed as quickly as everyone, you know, they get it in their heads that it's me. So we know that, which is why you do have to walk a really fine line with these, um, and the training from Dr. Tran, even in the conscious parenting that we've been talking about is good for us as facilitators too, because I don't praise your good drawing skills. I don't praise your incredible math science evaluations of something. I have to be so careful about even the praise that we give in these so that you're not like subversively undermining that whole process too. It is a It's a lot of a balancing act with this. Mm -hmm. But the last thing we want to do is make somebody feel good or bad based on, again, one moment, one tiny Mm -hmm. snapshot of a project. And they've done 150 things since we started this, and they'll do 150 other things in their week. So to to stamp a value on it feels really just, it does more harm than it does give anybody information so i just think it's a good thing for us to stay away from we just value the process value the growth value the willingness to participate the willingness to be part of a community that's sharing in this event a time for all of our families to come together and just kind of take a peek at what everybody's been up to 
without the value, without the evaluation, and without that stamp of either approval or disapproval. Neither one of those are a good thing to do. Yeah. That's um, two things there you mentioned. Building culture was one, like, right, the family's coming and getting yeah. to see and celebrating this, uh, the process and, and just learning, right? Um, it, it, every time we've gone to these expo nights, of course, naturally, there's anxiety and like, how's this going to go? <laughs> yeah. At the end of it, it's like, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Um, at least up to this point, it's, it's yeah. had that feel of just, you know, really good vibes and kids proud of yes. their, what they just did and mm-hmm. um, just a big confidence builder. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's neat to see the hands-off approach um, that we do with the kids and how many of them choose to do the harder thing mm. of doing a live performance, <laughs> yeah. right? I think it started with just a couple and it's grown each time and it'll ebb and flow, but yeah. new kids are trying it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and we encourage a little bit here and there, but some will blow yeah. you away. I think we had one young one last time. Oh that we had goodness. planned, hey, you're doing like the science fair kind of format where you're at a table and a yeah. station and people are coming around. And the day of, he was like, I'm doing it live. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was great. So Yeah, he did so good. Just giving, him the, giving them the space. And when they're ready to take that next challenge or step, they'll do it. Um, yes. You just, again, sometimes it takes longer yeah. to get there. Um, yeah. So that's those two things are really neat when we have those expo nights and then after the fact right we're not grading them Mm -hmm. so they're not stuck on i got this grade and forgetting all the content and the yeah the process and the skills that we're actually trying to learn yeah um so afterwards the next week after the expo night we'll sit down with our kids and just talk about how it went right and like what would you do differently and let's look at the process we went through yeah um everything from organizing materials to the schedule we have to um, even picking topics. So it's neat to just stay on what we're actually trying to learn rather than this is the percent you got on this and this is how it bumps your grade here or there. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So it, it, you get a lot of the other things out of the way. It it works out really well. Yeah. And it's neat at that point because then they're really evaluating their own, process and how did they perform for themselves up up to whatever standard they've got for themselves did Mm -hmm. they give it their best did they do everything they could did they problem solve along the way did they handle you know setbacks and and the things that fall apart and literally structures that are toppling over hitting the ground and scattering into pieces you know what did I do in that moment and just I mean, it's all those life skills, again, that you would never be able to put on a rubric. You'd never grade grit or yeah. <laughs> problem solving. I mean, we, mm-hmm. you know, we call it critical thinking, but you'd be, you'd be in a silo of one subject at a time. So this, where you're just like, how are you doing at life? Let's talk about that. How did you handle your own pressure and your own timelines? I think those things are so much more valuable and they are not, you can't grade those kinds of things. Yeah, for sure. So what should the audience uh, look for? Um, oh, that's the trickiest part. I feel like I say it every time I get ready for an expo, that what you can't see, again, in this one moment, is the hours and hours and hours and hours of preparation that went into it. Um, because they do think about it and they plan and they kick around ideas and they change their mind and they start over and they scrap something and they get pulled into a new direction. And there is no way, again, just like with grading, there's no way to really communicate that to somebody who hasn't been with them for the last three months, four months that we've been planning and going through this. So I think really the thing that an audience member has got to do is dig You've got to dig and look past the artwork. You've got to go past the live performance. And really, you have to sit and think about what it might have taken to get them to this point. And know, again, there's a a hundred intangible moments. There's a lot of conversations that go in, a lot of hands-on, a lot of problem solving along the way. Um, But the four main things that we often encourage audiences or onlookers or visitors to look for in our space is creativity, collaboration, critical thinking, and communication. 
Um, and every single project, whether it's been in a group or whether it's been an independent study for this journey upcoming for rock, will absolutely have included those in crazy amounts that, again, you just can't measure. You just have to trust that it's there. Um, but there are some very creative, funny, where you see their humor start to mm -hmm. come into what they're doing. I love that. We had one last time, too, where it was just like all of this one particular student's personality was just in his project. And he was like putting himself out there, live performance, so funny, so mm -hmm. witty, mm -hmm. just shows you they're willing to bring themselves and really show up in that space, which I think is incredibly brave. And I just honor that in each one of them so much. It's an honor to watch somebody bring all of themselves to a presentation like that. It's not just reading off a three by five card, you know, like wrote information that I found interesting when I was on the history tour, blah, blah. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. really, they bring personality and, mm -hmm. and their character and oh, all their individuality to these. Lots of ours this time will be group projects. So there's lots of collaboration that's been going on, helping each other stay motivated, helping each other stay on task, helping each other, you know, grind through when it gets boring because it does. Um, lots of critical thinking where we've seen them problem solving. So it's good for you to ask those kinds of questions too as you come in. Um, ask where you've seen, you know, where have they experienced times where something didn't go very well? What did you have to overcome? Um, times maybe when the group was challenging even to just be in because they're in relationships and that's a normal part. Conflict is a normal, healthy part of working through community. Um, and then just watch how they communicate their information. So ask good questions. Ask the deep questions because they have answers for those. I think we can go deeper when you're not worried about a grade. You can go for the deeper things. Um, more reflective questions are completely encouraged um, because that's really where they have an opportunity to reflect and you have an opportunity to find out some of the backstory for these. Yeah, that's great. Um, the only thing I'd maybe emphasize on it, and it ties into what you said, is how much responsibility they had mm. with these projects. Yeah, that's so true. And this is where our egos are in check because, right, again. Like, <laughs> that's why it's so nerve-wracking because I have no control. Yeah. My control issues come out right? at your any time. Stepping back and like, whew, I don't know how this is going to look for you. Yeah. But they're adamant, like, this is how it's going to be. Yes. <clears throat> it's it's so worth it because <laughs> it's true. it's truly their project. Yep. And they were truly responsible for it. Yep. And they had to manage it. And with the little ones, we give more help with, obviously. But, yeah. man, it, it strikes me. I don't know. It's amazing thus far they pulled it off. <laughs> Each so time. far, every time it's yeah, gone great. Like, wow. Okay. <laughs> but it is so true. We do not micromanage. We ask reflective questions, mm -hmm. lots, mm -hmm. and clarifying questions, lots. And can you see anything going wrong with this? Or can you see maybe where this... You know, if you look ahead, these many steps are, you know, are we missing anything that you can think of? And when they say no, and you're like, oh, I see one. It's right there. It's glaring me in the yeah. face. You're just like, okay, oh. well, if you hit a bump, let me right. know because we're here to support you. And you're like, I know, right? When you get to step four, <laughs> yeah. you're missing a piece yeah. Yeah. and they do figure it out. Yep. They get there and they go, oh, right. And you're like, oh yeah, I saw it coming because I've had experience. You didn't see it coming. But still, now, you're going to work through it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, and it's not my job to <clears throat> tell you all the answers because the process, again, is so important for them. And managing your own time is incredibly hard for yeah. all of us. So for them to be able to make those little tiny adjustments on the way without having us micromanage, the learning is really profound. The journey is like a drop in the bucket. Right. Right. Like, really, you get this little, like, trinket from a tourist shop. Yeah. It's almost that level yeah. of, like, impressive. You know what I mean? It's cool, but it's like, eh, yeah, yeah. okay, we'll move on. Yeah. But because that whole trip yeah. to get to the tourist shop, the gift shop on the right. other end, was, right. like, this monumental process, which is yeah. why we call it a journey. Yeah. It is, it sometimes is a mountain that they've had to climb and work around. And you just have to be there to be supportive when they're like, wait, this isn't working. And you're like, oh, okay, let's walk through why, mm -hmm. maybe. So yeah, if I got to plan them all, it wouldn't be nearly as fun, <laughs> but I'd feel way better about it <laughs> personally, which is why this is a challenge, you know, right. is, we're all yeah, growing and going yeah. through a journey. Yeah. Anything else? 
I'm curious, why do you think, what's the purpose of the themes? Why, oh, yeah. why rock? Why who am I? Why not just be like, because we were just talking about how they create all the time, right? Like, why don't we just snag one of those, hold it for mm-hmm. ransom, right? and then like, like there put you it out at the drink. Yeah. Like, no, this is what you should do. What's, what's the purpose of the themes? There might be a couple things there. Um, one, it allows you to think outside of the box, which you've already pointed out they're doing that type of stuff all the time just by being creative but Mm. um you know taking a concept like rock yeah and then realizing i don't want to be a spoiler but we've have we've got (laughs) some that don't have anything to do with minerals or soil or right typical rock yeah right so the kids are getting outside of you know what you would normally think of for the topic and uh making these connections that i don't know if you would get if you didn't have a topic yeah I also think it does create this scenario where it's a little bit more formal in the process of starting with an idea, doing the research, you know, setting up field trips and finding people you can connect with and then creating this product. If they didn't have a topic, again, they're doing that already. But maybe it's the degree. It's a little bit more spontaneous when they're doing it, when we're not working on journey. Yeah. So I don't know if there's a difference there, but I could maybe see where there might be one. Yeah. How about you? I think that's really good because I sometimes struggle when we get to this point of journeys and I'm like, what is it all for? Mm. Because it does get crunch time and we do feel like, you know, you feel the pressure of a live performance coming up. And Mm -hmm. and one of our, one of our kiddos today asked me like, Ellen, are you going to do a journey project? And I'm like, every time I have an idea and I really want to, and then you become my journey project. (laughs) Right. Helping everybody get yes. to the finish line yeah, yeah, yeah. is my journey project yeah. every time. So there, there is always that week before where I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know, am I too pushy? Am I, am I switching over from like guide on the side to like dictator who's like, just get it done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just have to have something. Yeah. So I, I question it, but I think, I think that even the, even when you said the more formalized side of it. It's good for us to know what it feels like to handle a deadline. Mm -hmm. And we never really have that outside of a journey here. It's like, hey, make choices, do, you know, do what makes you happy. But to have an external deadline isn't really something I think we bump into very often. They impose their own all the time. We're going to finish it by this and we're going to meet here. I mean, they're organizing. But I do see what you mean by the slightly more formal to a degree where there's this external thing that I need to meet and then how do I work backwards from that with the end in mind kind of idea. And then even if it's a little uncomfortable, we've seen them grow in confidence because they've been given the opportunity to present information and they've been met with such positive responses to what they've brought to the table, so to speak. We've seen one who couldn't even speak Mm during a live performance Tears. and that was just with our yeah. own class mm-hmm. um just a tiny little group of mm-hmm. us on our very first one and then now that kid I was making <laughs> the decision to go live just beaming <laughs> yeah so to watch them go through that I think eventually we would have seen the same kinds of growth I don't think yeah. that because yeah, the yeah, journey yeah. right this is the only way to get this kind of right. outcome I wouldn't yeah. subscribe to that hmm. Uh, But I do think it gives them a good opportunity to maybe make some bigger jumps along the way. And again, like you bring in an audience that's not your people necessarily. I mean, it's their people, but then it's other people's people that they don't know that they're not super familiar with. And it does kind of ratchet up the stakes a little bit, which gives them a good opportunity to kind of rise to that. I think Yeah, I'm talking myself back into it. It's probably a good (laughs) thing. I might right. talk myself out of it at like Out noon today, right. but I'm definitely back in. <laughs> right? No, and I think giving, you know, there's a lot of choice in how they want to present in those yeah. things. And that gives them that, right? I'm getting outside of my comfort zone, but right. I still got control. Yeah, they can still find the Goldilocks yeah. zone even in the presentation. Yeah. yeah, and definitely they're making their own choices on what mm-hmm. they're bringing to the presentation. So that's, yeah, it's been, and then I feel like they get excited as we get closer and closer. They're more yes. and more excited about whatever mm-hmm. they're about to show off. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are good moments too, good opportunities that we wouldn't normally see in our you know, average week. Well, if you're coming to the expo night, we hope you found this valuable and gives you a little background of what the goal is for us at least. And um, yeah, hope to see you there.